In the last stream, we were working on getting some of the highest tier Bs that it's possible for us to get. Those being the Awakened Draconian Bee and the Dragon Bee. And since the end of the last episode, both of these have been chugging away, making us a ton of honeycomb blocks. And all of those honeycomb blocks are, of course, being processed by our myriad of elite centrifuges to get us Awakened Draconium ingots and Dragon Eggs. We do finally have some dragon eggs. It did take a little while for them to come in, but after about a day and a half, we now have over 900 dragon eggs, which is good on the one hand, but on the other hand, if we want to get 47 of these dragon egg singularities, which is what we're going to need to beat the pink, we need 141,000 dragon eggs, which is way more than the 900 that we currently have. And whilst we could just wait approximately 150 days for the remaining 140,000 dragon eggs to come in, I think instead we should probably look at getting more dragon bees and using those to produce even more dragon eggs. Now to do that, we have uh, a couple of things we need to do. The first dragon bee that we're going to get, we're going to have to do the same thing we did in the last episode. That means we're going to have to go fight the end dragon again, get another dragon head, and once we have another dragon head, we can then use that to uh, to get another dragon bee spawn egg using the end bee. And then once we have two dragon bees, we can then actually breed them together using the dragon's breath that we've been getting from our first dragon. And thankfully, we now have over 50,000 dragon's breath, and so we should be able to breed together really as many dragon bees as we like as soon as we have just one more of them especially given that the bee box allows us to instantaneously turn any baby bees into adult bees, and it also allows us to instantly reset the breeding cooldown on any bee that we've used to make another bee. And so once we have two dragon bees, it should be easy for us to get infinite dragon bees. And in terms of the dragon bee nectar blocks, we already have a ton of dragon eggs. And so right now we could make effectively 450 dragon bee nectar blocks. And as far as end honeycomb is concerned we do only have two here right now but of course we can get more fairly easily if we simply turn off the extracting of combs from whichever one of these apiaries currently has the end bee in it which i think is one of these never mind our end bee is actually over in here and the end bee nectar block is over here as well we did have one extra end bee in the system and one is currently hiding out in that hive there i'll be sure to move that over in just a second, I'm pretty sure this belongs over here. So if we do this and this, and then if we temporarily over here, pick up our distributor module that's pulling from apiaries, and we just tell it to temporarily not pull from here, they will start to back up in there, and we can come and take those when we want to make more of the dragon bee nectar blocks. And so what I want to do right away at the start of today's stream is I would like to look at fighting the end dragon one more time so that we can get one more dragon head and then use that to get unlimited dragon bees that we can put into all of our apiaries to massively increase the speed at which we're getting those dragon eggs. Now, as we learned in the last episode, there's a couple of things that we can do to make our lives a little bit easier when it comes to fighting the end dragon. The first is that having a bow and some arrows might help us with the end crystals that we have to break. Uh, speaking of end crystals, we do need to actually get some regular end crystals that we can use to re-summon the dragon. For that, it looks like we need glass. It's not too surprising that we don't have any glass because all of our glass is being used to make the glass bottles that are getting us the dragon's breath with the dragon combs. But once we have those end crystals and for that we also need eyes of ender that's fine i'm also not sure if we're going to have enough guest tiers for this we do never mind but uh, once we have those we then could do with upgrading our sword because right now this iron sword whilst fine does take a very 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 long time to kill the dragon especially if we don't get rid of all of the crystals like the ones that are buried inside the obsidian pillars thankfully we do have a uh, fully functioning pickaxe this time so it should be easier for us to potentially break those crystals, but we can also look at using some of the powerful resources like Manulin that we have to upgrade our sword here. Specifically, if we were to go ahead and make ourselves a sword blade cast, which we can do by grabbing some gold out of the system, I did go ahead and empty out the smeltery. All I did was just break the controller and then replace it back down because we were starting to get to a point where we had just a lot of junk in our smeltery and occasionally when we put stuff in it would begin making alloys that we didn't really want over here we can pull that out that is going to get us a sword blade cast i think i'll also do the same with a tool handle as well i think i'd like to get a tool handle cast because we can essentially upgrade the entirety of our sword here 
to Manulin, so long as we don't run out of Blazing Blood. Uh, right now, it looks like we're going to be fine on that. If we want to make a Manulin Sword Blade, that is going to require two ingots worth of Manulin, and then each of the two tool handles also requires two ingots. And so we want to go ahead and smelt down four Manulin ingots here. While we wait for those to smelt down, we can go ahead and pull the gold over the tool rod there to make our tool rod cast. Fantastic. And from there, it should just be as simple as pulling out two Manulin tool handles, which do have slightly lower attack speed and mining speed. The mining speed obviously doesn't matter too much, but the attack speed matters a little bit. We have a 5% reduction in attack speed versus the wooden tool handle that we currently have. But in return, we do get a 25% increase in damage, which I think is definitely worth the trade-off. The same is kind of true here with the actual sword blade itself. We do get a, a nice boost to the attack damage over our pre-existing blade. This has a base attack damage of 3.5. The iron blade has a base attack damage of two. And so we do get a, quite a big bump over our basic iron sword. And so here, if we do something like this, I think we should be able to upgrade the blade and then upgrade both of the tool handles. Maybe just one tool handle, actually. That's interesting. Either way, uh, we do now have a sword that has substantially more attack damage than it did previously. And I don't think the attack speed is really gonna be too affected. And so let me go ahead and drop this back in here. And I guess let's head on through, actually, I do need those arrows. Uh, let's head on back through to the end and see if we can't defeat the end dragon a second time, hopefully a little bit faster than we did the first time. Thankfully, in the last episode, we did make this dislocator. So getting back to the end, thankfully, much easier than getting the cake. So we don't have to stand in the smeltery. And then over here, let's go ahead and do a quick one, two, three, and four. And there he is. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of these crystals. There do appear to be fewer crystals this time around, so I do think it was potentially some kind of bug or maybe just a leftover kind of remnant of other people on the server fighting the dragon that there were so many crystals that we had to break last time because this time there's just one crystal on each pillar, which does make this substantially easier than it was last time, but uh, it still doesn't affect my aim and make that any better, unfortunately. And then we'll see if there are any more of those kind of hidden crystals this time around. I assume that they are likely to be in the uh, in the exact same place they were previously. Thankfully, again, our armor doing a ton of work here in uh, preventing us from taking too much damage, both from the dragon and from the end crystals themselves, when we go and break them here. So we do have dragon minions this time. I think this is part of the, uh, the fight getting more difficult each time we do it. So there are, like, elements here that make the dragon more difficult to fight this time. These are basically shulkers that are firing uh, things at me as we try and fight. I was trying over here to break this crystal. I didn't bring any blocks with me, and so I'm standing on this uh, fluid pipe here. And then unfortunately, my um, pickaxe is tremendously slow to the point where it does take us way too long to break into this obsidian. And again, unfortunately, I, uh, I don't actually know where the crystal itself is. If I change this to shapeless, it is going to break a lot of obsidian. It's going to take quite a bit of damage off my pickaxe, but I think it should be fine. And I think this is the only extra crystal around here. There it is. Get rid of that. And again, there's so many of them. But now that those are gone, that should make killing the dragon substantially easier. There we go. Okay, right. The dragon has been defeated for a second time. And hopefully somewhere around here, there should be, there it is, another dragon head. Perfect. Okay, so let's take that. Uh, we don't really need all of the draconium dust here, but we might as well take it. And then we've also, of course, got another Awakened Draconium Heart here, which again, I don't think we need, but again, we might as well take, and we'll also summon uh, another Dragon Egg to add to the pile. That is completely fine. Let's head back, and let's see then about using this once again to get us another Dragon Egg Beast. So I'll put it down back here, just like we did last time, and I guess we will have to go and once again steal that End Bee Nectar Block from the apiary that we just put down. Let me make sure this is set correctly. It looks like it is perfect. And then back over here, hopefully for the last time, let's do a quick one of these and a quick one of these. Perfect. That guy should pollinate. He should give us a dragon egg bee. And then from there, we can then take our dragon's breath and begin breeding the bees that we already have using the bee box. And it's probably gonna be in our best interest. I also don't know. Oh, our bee box will be in here, right? I forgot that I dumped a ton of stuff in here. There it is. But um, we are probably going to, at the very least, want to put a dragon bee, if not two dragon bees, into every single one of the apiaries that we currently have, with the exception of this apiary right here, because this one just produces uh, combs that go into the system, not combs that get processed. On top of that, 
I think we're going to want to set up a lot more apiaries. And I'm talking potentially up to 100 more apiaries because the odds of getting the dragon eggs are just so low and we need so many of them. As I mentioned before, it's been about a day and a half and we have approximately 900 eggs, which means that it would currently at our current pace take 141 days to get enough eggs for us to complete the pack. Even if we put bees into all of the apiaries that we currently have, which is 12, that would only divide that 141 days by 12, taking us to approximately, you know, 13 days or something like that. And so even with dragon bees in every single apiary, it's still going to take two weeks of just letting the server run 24 hours a day to get enough dragon eggs. And so we are going to have to build a ton more apiaries. In theory, approximately 140 more if we wanted it to take like 24 hours or just under. But we're going to need to build, I think, nearly 100 more apiaries uh, at tier four and put dragon bees in every single one of them to get the dragon eggs that we need in a reasonable period of time. Thankfully, we do have copy paste gadgets in the pack. This is going to allow us to select one apiary or potentially even select, you know, all six apiaries, copy it. And then as long as we have the resources to build it, we can then just paste it again and again and again to get a ton of apiaries. The tricky part is going to be just getting that many tier four apiaries because if we were to go ahead and request, let's say a hundred more of these tier four apiaries, whilst we do surprisingly have all of the combs, all of the string, all of the nether stars, we do not have the 204,000 grass required to make this work. We're missing 180,000 of it. And so we are going to have to massively increase our grass game. We also don't have a crafting CPU that can perform a 1.5 million byte craft. Not even close. Our biggest CPU is about 120,000 bytes. And so what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to go ahead and request, let's say 100 tier one apiaries. We do have what it takes to make that. And we have enough of the resources to do that as well. I don't think we're gonna have the same resources to make 100 tier two apiaries. Never mind, we totally do. I'm gonna start there. That's gonna take a little while to do, but in the meantime, whilst that is getting done, there are other things that we can work on. For example, over here, our dragon egg is done. And so we can take this guy, I guess, over into here. And we can also go ahead and grab our original dragon bee as well from in here and we can begin breeding these guys together we can also of course begin hopefully siphoning the end blocks out of here fantastic that's going to be enough for us to get 32 more of the uh, dragon bee nectar blocks which for now is more than enough let me quickly go ahead and make sure that this is re-added to this uh, distributor module to allow it to continue processing combs from this apiary but uh, yes whilst we wait here i'm going to go ahead and make a bunch more of the dragon bee nectar blocks if we go ahead and grab 64 dragon eggs here we can put those in with the 64 end blocks and then over in here we should be able to set this to just continually make the dragon bee nectar blocks and hopefully then once that's done and once we've bred a bunch of these dragon bees which again we can do with this dragon's breath let's give this a quick try here one two three four five and one two three four five thankfully this is within the radius of our beacon so they're not going to teleport away which is perfect and then once this is done we can do one two and oops and three and then the new bee we can of course go and put back into here but we're just going to keep doing that until we have a ton of dragon bees and then i'm going to make sure that each and every one of our apiaries apart from this one has a dragon bee nectar block in it and has at least two dragon bees. Real quick over here, it seems like we've got a slight problem with these glass bottles not coming in fast enough. You'll see right here that there's a bit of downtime between when the process finishes and when we get enough bottles, which is nine, for this to start going again. And so one thing we could potentially do here is change this recipe because right now it just sends three glass at a time. If we come back over here, we could potentially change this recipe to require a stack of sand and then in turn produce a stack of glass. And once we have at least a stack, we can do this and click encode. So now whenever we want glass, it's automatically going to go ahead and make a stack of it at once instead of just making one at a time, which is perfect. We could also maybe look at putting acceleration cards in here if that is potentially part of the problem as well. I don't think it is. Uh, but we could do something like this. I don't know if that's going to help it tremendously because I think the problem really is a bottleneck in terms of production speed. Over here, we do already have a few of the acceleration cards in here. We could put uh, one or two more in if we really wanted to try and maximize the speed there because we really do need this running at full speed like all the time. We can't have this not working given how low the odds are. So we could definitely do with that. 
we also need to tweak things a little bit as well, because if we start putting dragon eggs in all of these, which is the plan, by the way, I've gone ahead and put down a dragon bean block here, and we're gonna do the same thing in all of these other apiaries. We're gonna start moving some of our pre-existing bees to new apiaries, and we're gonna put one dragon bean block in each apiary, but we need to make sure that all the dragon bee honeycomb blocks end up inside of this centrifuge, because if they go to the other centrifuges, they're not gonna get processed because they don't have the glass bottles. Right now, we do have a backlog, a little bit of a backlog, simply due to that bottle problem we were seeing earlier. But I think once the bottle problem is fixed, I think this will be able to process, at the very least, one or two more apiaries worth of dragon combs. But as per usual, we're probably just going to have to build even more apiaries to be able to process all the combs, especially once we get uh, all of them up and running. And especially, of course, once we get 100 more apiaries up and running, we're going to have to build a staggering number of these elite centrifuges. What we should probably do here, though, is... Over here, we have the distributor module that distributes to the casing. We can probably use that to blacklist the dragon honeycomb blocks. So over here, this distributor module, we want this to blacklist dragon combs. And then instead, what I think we probably want to do is get a, another sender module, and we'll use that sender module to whitelist the sending of the dragon combs to our dragon centrifuge if that makes sense so essentially in here you're going to set to whitelist dragon combs and then we're going to have both of these actually set to here and then we'll put one of those in like so and we'll put one of those in here as well now i assume that's probably out of range although it looks like it's actually completely fine and then we'll do the same thing in here we'll set uh, this to blacklist the dragon combs and so it shouldn't send dragon combs. If any of these two routers receive dragon combs, they shouldn't put them in any of these centrifuges. They should send them over to this router, which will put them into this centrifuge. We might have to add some kind of buffer draw or chest if this ends up backing up and that causes the rest of this to back up because we do need this to keep functioning. But for now, we'll leave that as it is and we'll see how it goes. And we can begin putting dragon bees into all of these apiaries. All right. So quite a while later, I've built even more elite centrifuges because we were once again backing up with the centrifuges that we had. So we built six more of the centrifuges here. We've connected all of those up. We did run into one slight issue, and that is that you can only send to a maximum of eight locations with one distributor module. And so we have one in here that's sending to eight centrifuges. We have one in here that's sending to eight centrifuges. And then we've had to add another one because we now have 17 centrifuges all being sent to by these two uh, routers, and then of course we have the 18th one over here, which is still being sent with these pullers and senders. We also now have at least one dragon bee nectar block in every single one of these apiaries, and every single one of these apiaries, apart from this one here, because again, this one produces blocks that are not processed, but all of the rest of the apiaries are now full with one dragon bee nectar block and with two dragon bees. So we've maxed out the number of dragon bees that we can put in the apiaries that we currently have. And over here, all of that is being processed into more dragon eggs. We are currently at a whopping 1,106 out of 141,000 dragon eggs. So they are coming in slightly faster. Again, you know, about 11 times faster than they were previously. But that's still going to take about 12, 13, 14 days if we leave it at its current speed to get us what we need. So instead, we're going to have to build many, many, many more apiaries to get this to work. Before we get start working on that, over here we have added a storage drawer that I have filled with drawer upgrades. Right now, this is full, and it's still not getting glass bottles fast enough. The reason for that is that we're not smelting fast enough. Uh, we could look at upgrading this smelting factory, and we are going to have to do that in the near future, but I think right now we're kind of just burning through a backlog. I think once this backlog is done, we should start backing up on glass bottles here, which is why I've put this down and put all these storage upgrades in, and so hopefully we'll start backing up on those, and we'll have a nice backlog ready for when we increase the number of dragon honeycombs that we produce massively. But then again, also we are gonna have to work on improving our smelting functionality and we're probably also gonna have to get a lot more sand bees as well because the sand bees are also going to allow us to get enough sand to make the glass for the glass bottles. But that's a problem for future Isaac. Right now, we need to upgrade these apiaries. So the system did manage to make 100 tier two apiaries. Now, if we want 100 tier three apiaries though, we once again run into our grass issue and the same issue is there, of course, for making 100 tier four apiaries, but just on a bigger scale. So we need a lot more grass, a lot more grass. And so my plan, essentially, is going to be to build a ton more of these hopping botany pots. I have gone ahead and put upgrades in here, which is something I should have done a long time ago, by the way, but 
what we're going to have to do to get these in a reasonable period of time is make a ton of hopper botany pots, those being these guys. And we're also going to have to get, uh, of course, a bunch of grass, plant it. And we can use this phyto soil here to grow it that little bit faster. You'll see right here, it has a growth modifier of 0.35, which means it's 35% faster than no modifier at all. And so for the grace here, this currently takes 30 seconds to grow. With the phyto soil, it will only take 20. So it's a good 10 seconds faster per cycle, which is gonna increase the amount of grace we get. Thankfully, it's not too difficult to make here. It's just charcoal, phyto grow, and dirt. Now, uh, on the dirt standpoint, we actually don't have that much dirt. We do, however, I hope, have a dirt bee lying around somewhere in here. We do indeed. And I'm also hopeful that the dirt bee just pollinates on a regular flower. It doesn't, it pollinates on dirt, but that's actually completely fine. If we take this dirt here and we're gonna add it to one of our apiaries, for example, this one right here, which right now just has a uh, dragon bee in it, we can do this and this, that's gonna start producing more dirt combs for us, which we can then of course process into dirt. We are gonna want to get another draw so that dirt has somewhere to go. Uh, right now, we might have a draw for dirt somewhere, but we could definitely do with a, uh, a bigger draw for dirt as it comes in here. Of course, every single one of the botany pots we put down is going to require at least one dirt, and so we do very much so want to get this down over here. Boom, and boom. That's going to allow us, hopefully, to make this phytosoil a little bit easier. But now, back over here, we should be able to encode the phyto soil. We can also go ahead and encode the phyto grow, which is super easy, by the way. It is just appetite, nitre, and sand, all of which we have in abundance thanks to our bees. And now we can put this down over here. We did go ahead and add co-processing units to all of these, and I added another uh, molecular assembler over here to make bottle crafting faster, although I don't really think that this was the bottleneck for us. I think the bottleneck was the smelting, but that will help when we get smelting uh, going a little bit faster. Either way, uh, the only slightly tricky bit here really is gonna be the production of charcoal because we don't have that much charcoal. And of course, if we want to get charcoal, we first have to get logs, which we can do. Uh, we could go ahead and request a thousand of these. And then from there, we actually have to smelt those logs into charcoal, which is easier said than done when my smeltery is basically a full-time glass making operation. Uh, over here, yeah, you can see we're slowly but surely working through the backlog. And so we should hopefully uh, slowly but surely start backing up on glass bottles there as well. What I might do temporarily is turn off the input here so that we can utilize this to make some charcoal and then we'll use that charcoal to make the phyto soil. It's really only a one-time thing we have to do. Another one-time thing that we have to do is of course make all of the hopper body pots. My plan here is going to be to get yet another compact machine. This time we'll go for the, uh, the largest one that we can muster and we'll throw this down over here. And essentially what we're gonna do if we grab our personal shrinking device, all we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and just fill this room with body pots. Thankfully, I'm fairly certain you can extract out of hopping body pots. And so essentially, if we do something like this, we can then potentially go down like this. We can put body pots all along the top here, fill them all with grass, fill them all with phytosoil, set them all to extract. And then we can go down one, we can put another line of them down, set them all down, set them to extract and kind of continue that all the way along. And we can really make this as full as we like. We're probably not gonna fill the entire compact machine, but we're gonna have all those get processed through and then we'll have them all go through an ender chest background to a storage drawer that is connected to our system. What we might do is make another drawer that's not, we can probably make a compacting drawer actually that they all go into just because the compacting drawers have so much space. And so that's kind of the plan. The plan is gonna to be to get a ton of the botany pots down to make a ton of grass because we need like 180,000 grass if we're gonna make 100 tier four apiaries, which as I said earlier, I think is gonna be necessary if we're gonna get those required dragon heads in a reasonable period of time. All right, so not too long later, we now have this monstrosity right here. We have got a hundred of these hopper bunny pots, each and every one filled with phyto grass and each and every one filled with regular grass as well. Uh, the pipe goes all the way along, down, across, down, across, down. It zigzags all the way around, uh, ending up all the way down here at the ender chest, which is currently empty, which is not a good sign. I think this works. Although maybe it, oh, you know, it might not actually work. Now that I've set this up, I think we might have to have these go into a chest first. I really thought this would work, but that is not working, which is unfortunate. All of these are down though. We got a hundred of them. Some quick 
calculations, and I think it's going to take about 10 hours with 100 of these body pots for us to get 180,000 grass, which is what we still need, basically, if we want to get 100 tier 5 berries. That's fine, though. We can leave this running and doing its thing. Uh, over here, we have the other uh, ender chest here. Again, these are both set to the green, green, green frequency, and they both have the diamond upgrade, so they're locked to me personally. I think, though, that, unfortunately, this is not going to work. Because these, I think, are all set to extract. It's quite possible if one of them isn't set to extract, the items could be going somewhere else, but I think they are all set to extract here, and so they should all be going around into this ender chest. A few of these don't have anything in them. That's because we made a few more botany pots than we did uh, phyto grow, uh, phyto soil. We made exactly 100 phyto soil, so we have exactly 100 of them set up. But I might have to actually tweak this a little bit so that all of the... Hopper botany pots go into a chest first. I really thought this worked though. All right, so it's a little wacky, but we've gone ahead and replaced all of the pipes with storage drawers. The reason for that is that uh, with this draw controller here, we should just be able to place this down like this and then set this to extract over into the ender chest. And that should basically pull everything from all of these into the ender chest. Of course, there's a slight problem, and that problem is the uh, speed at which that pipe can pull. And so what we're gonna have to do, much like we've done previously, is grab uh, two emeralds along with five iron and five gold. That's going to allow us to make the uh, gold pipe upgrade, the same gold pipe upgrade that we're using on all of our elite centrifuges. And so let's do this. Chat is right that we do have a pipe upgrade in storage. I'm blind, that's fine, let's take that. And then over here, let's go ahead and install that over here. And then hopefully that's gonna be somewhat fast enough. You'll see the good news is because we've not locked these drawers, they are receiving both the regular grass and the tall grass because there are two products here. We are only interested in the regular grass. We're not interested at all in the tall grass. And so out here, we're gonna take this ender chest. I have chunk loaded that compact machine and so it should still work whilst we're not in there. And then out here, let's get another compacting drawer like this. We're gonna put that down up on the wall of compacting drawers up here. Let me get the draw key, we'll do this. And essentially all I think we're gonna do here is just extract out of this ender chest like this. So what we'll do is we'll take some grass down here because it is grass that we want. And then we'll place that up into the lock chest like so. We'll set this to extract. So we are gonna have to make that pipe upgrade down here anyway. Let me go ahead and drop all of the items in like this. And then we do have the uh, double arrow cast in here, ready to go down and ready for the emeralds, cool. And then I think all we'll do is potentially get another pipe that I was gonna say extracts into a trash can, but it's probably gonna be cheaper if we just extract into another locked drawer with a void upgrade for the tall grass. Because if it's a trash can, then we've got to filter it specifically. And filtering becomes tricky with the uh, the pipes because they're a little expensive for the upgrades. But uh, if we just go ahead and, uh, and get some tall grass, put that into a different drawer. Let's say one that goes down right about maybe... Uh, actually, we could put it right here, like that. Put the tall grass in, like so. And then if we just take a void upgrade in there, Everything's gonna come out of this chest and then all the tall grass will go in there, excess will get deleted, and all the regular grass, the stuff that we're actually after, will go into a drawer that we're then gonna upgrade with storage upgrades. And uh, we should have quite a few of those in here, we do indeed. Uh, we could put a void upgrade in there, but I actually don't think it's necessary at all. Let's do this and let's do this. Not that we really need that much dirt going forward. Let's also make sure that we do something like this as well. That's gonna give us another golden pipe upgrade that we can then go and throw into the pipe connected to the ender chest up here. And now we should have a pretty good grass making setup. It's gonna produce a lot of grass. Like I said, I think it's gonna take about 10 hours to get all of the grass that we're going to need. All right, so it's been about a day since we set up all of the grass botany pots. And now back over in our system here, we have 236,000 grass, more than enough for us to craft 100 tier four apiaries. But as per usual, the only problem that we run into now is the speed at which we can craft them and the amount of bites required to craft all of those apiaries. So we'll start with the tier three apiaries. I think even here, we don't have enough bites to do them all at once, we don't. We could look at making our crafting CPU bigger, but I think for the time being, what I might go ahead and do is just see about requesting maybe 50 of these. That's possible. We'll hit start 
And then what I think we'll also do real quick is we will look at adding even more crafting co-processing units to this CPU here, and then adding even more molecular assemblers to all of the ME interfaces that actually do any auto crafting. One thing to bear in mind that is quite useful is that the molecular assemblers here don't increase the number of channels being used. So if you connect a molecular assembler to an ME interface, that already uses one channel. Adding more molecular interfaces to that ME interface doesn't increase the channel usage. And so we can really go crazy and add as many of these as we want. And as long as we have enough crafting co-processing units, it should be able to use them all. Another thing to bear in mind here that I did not know at the time, and in fact, I'm gonna cancel this craft real quick because I do want to do some uh, tweaks to the CPU here. One thing we can do is we can actually make this crafting CPU a different shape, it just has to be cuboidal. So right now we have it in a straight line. We can make it wider, it just has to be uh, fully filled in, if that makes sense. So real quick, back over here. Let me go ahead and see about getting some more uh, crafting co-processing units. For that, we just need to request even more of these crafting units. Let's go ahead and request maybe 10 of these. We don't have enough logic, processes, or clear glass. Uh, clear glass specifically is an odd one. Let me go and quickly check where that is held because that should not be requiring specifically clear glass. It should be able to use regular glass, which of course our system should know how to make. I assume by that then that the problem is actually with our Fluix cable, which will be hiding out in one of these as well. Never mind, it is here. It's a kind of a nested problem. It is with the quartz fiber. This thinks it needs clear glass. If I go ahead and just change this to allow substitutions, that should go ahead and use regular glass because our system knows how to make it instead of clear glass specifically for this craft, which is perfect. And then in terms of logic processes, we should of course be able to make those over using our inscribers over here. Right now we're making these uh, printed calculation circuits, but that's fine. We can go ahead and hopefully grab our logic press to begin making some more of these logic circuits. And then we'll use those to make more crafting co-processing units. And then essentially the idea here is that we can make this kind of into just a wider cube. If I go ahead and steal these, ideally without losing them to the void, which that one unfortunately is gone. But back up here, we should be able to do something like this, where we can throw this down here, we can throw this down here. And then if we put two more components here, it will once again form into a multi-block CPU. And so I'm probably gonna go ahead and make even more of these crafting co-processing units to see if we can't fill in maybe a cube like this. We might even go even wider. It really depends on how many we need. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and request a bunch more molecular assemblers to put them down on all of the sides of the ME interfaces that we can really, to really try and maximize the speed at which we can make some of these apiaries. So here, now that we have those 10 crafting units, we can go ahead and make 10 more crafting co-processing units, which is probably overkill. But now if we do something like this, it should once again form into a big crafting CPU. And in fact, we could even take this one further, given that we've got an extra four crafting co-processing units here. And we could do something like this to really go crazy on those crafting co-processing units, which is going to allow this to do a ton of crafts simultaneously. And now we just need a bunch of these molecular assemblers. Again, we'll go and maybe get 15 of these. We're just missing 14 logic processes and a few more logic processes later. Let's try that one more time. Can I get, let's say 10 of these? We can indeed. In fact, I'll probably request a few more of those as well. Can I get an extra five? I can, nice, cool. And then we're gonna take those. And as I mentioned, we're just gonna put those around our pre-existing crafters. Again, specifically the ones that are used to make these higher tiers of apiaries. This does work. And I believe this molecular assembler can be used for either the crafts in here or the crafts in here. I think that does work that way. And so that should be uh, quite good for us. And so let's go and put a lot of these down. Let's try the craft again and see if it can go just that little bit faster. And of course you can put these really on any and all sides of these interfaces. So long as it touches the interface, it is good to go. All right, so I just decided to go ahead and uh, request as many molecular assemblers as required to get all of these fully covered. And we've gone ahead and made a ton more of these acceleration cards here to allow us to fill every single one of these with acceleration cards, making this setup as fast as we currently can make it without moving stuff uh, substantially. And so let's go ahead and take a look again here at requesting those tier three APIs. It's already made 25 here. Let's go ahead at already made 25. That was surprisingly fast in that case then. Let me request another 50 if we can, which we almost can, not quite actually, that's fine. How many 
but we'll request another 25. We'll go up to the 50 that we initially intended to make, and we'll see how fast those come in. Hopefully, quite quickly, and hopefully over here, we should see, hello, my friend, uh, not a creeper. That's not what I was intending to see. We could probably do with putting down some more torches over here. But look at this. Look at how many of these are being used simultaneously and how much faster a lot of this crafting is being done because so many of these are being used simultaneously. Uh, not all of them, mind you. I don't know if that's a limit on the number of crafting code processing units we have. I think it might be because I think here we've got one, two, three, and then eight more. We've got 11 of the crafting code processing units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then that's a different craft, I think. But I think basically it's it's one crafting code processing unit for every extra molecular assembly you want to use. And so I think if we want to make this even faster, we could add even more crafting code processing units to that CPU. And I think it would make things notably faster. Let's see if we can't request maybe 12 more of these. We are still making the uh, calculation circuits over here. And so I can get yet more of those in the system. But I think we can put even more down to even more efficiently use all of the molecular assemblers that we have at our disposal. Yeah, here we go. I've added eight more crafting co-processing units here, and you'll see that we are now using even more, potentially all of the molecular assemblers that are usable here. Uh, these ones aren't being used just because this interface doesn't have a pattern that's being used, but all of these are kind of being fully saturated here to the point where we are, I think, tearing through this really as fast as we can, and these numbers are going down quite quickly. It's a little flickery, actually. I'll uh, close that, but I think we are now making those tier three APRs as fast as possible, which is perfect. And so essentially the plan here is gonna be for us to get the copy paste gadget from the building gadgets mod. That's this guy right here. Super easy to make, iron, redstone, lapis, and emeralds. And if we take this, we can charge it instantly because of our wireless charging from the Flux Networks, which is perfect. But then all we have to do is select the APR that we want to copy. Now, I think in the interest of making this easier, what I'm probably gonna do is kind of tweak the design a little bit. It's gonna look worse, but it's going to be easier for us to copy and paste because if we're gonna build 100 apiaries, I don't really want to have to chisel a ton of planks into the correct patterns for us to then copy and paste those planks. Instead, what I'll probably do instead is just use straight up oak logs because we can get these very easily. And I think we'll probably go ahead and build in a combination of both up and out, if that makes sense. So right now we've got just a line of apiaries here, but we can stack the apiaries on top of each other. And that's probably what we'll end up doing. Effectively, what I mean here is we'll get some dirt and then we've got a ton of dirt now, thanks to that dirt bee that we set up in the last part of this episode, uh, which was yesterday. But essentially what I think we'll do is kind of get rid of this and then we will throw down dirt instead of grass here. And then we'll build out another apiary using just regular oak logs. It's not gonna look quite as good, but it's gonna be much easier for us to duplicate on a large scale. And then once we've got the, the outline that we want, all you have to do with the copy-paste gadget is right-click in one place, first position set, and then shift right-click in another place in the opposite corner like this. And then now that's fully copied the outlined area. And if you hold down your building gadgets key, which as we saw before, if you go to controls, type in uh, building and then click category. It helps if you spell building right, uh, click category. It is this one right here, the settings menu. I have mine set to numpad six. You can set it to whatever you like, but if you hold that key down, you can change from copy to paste. And now we can kind of paste this down wherever we like. We just have to have all of the items in our inventory. And so my plan is to do something like this, right? We're gonna build a slightly easier to copy apiary, and then we're just gonna copy and paste it over and over again, on top here, on top over here, and then we'll probably also extend out in this direction and again, further up as well, maybe multiple levels up to allow us to, to really get a ton of apiaries. Uh, of course, we'll hopefully have the apiaries in our inventory to place those down. We're also gonna have to request 100 apiary storages as well to make it all work, but I think that should be fine. And we're almost certainly not going to use clear glass. Clear glass is a pain to make because you have to go through the Tinker Smeltery, but our system does already know how to make the honey glass. And so we could go ahead and request, you know, like 5,000 honey glass. That is something that we can do. And especially with our new faster system, that should be uh, possible for us to do. And then over here, we're already using exclusively honey glass on all of the new apiaries anyway. And so, yeah, I'm gonna build a new little apiary here while we wait for our tier three apiaries to finish crafting. In fact, never mind, the tier three apiaries are completely done. And so back over here, we do now have 50 of those. How many bytes is it gonna to take to turn 50 of those into tier four? Still another half million, which is real pricey. I guess we might have to do these in like batches of 
10? See, 10 is real low, but then 50 is real high. And that, of course, Isaac, is because as soon as we go higher than 10, each, I forget every time that we need four tier three apiaries for every one tier four apiary. And so as soon as we go higher than 12.5 here, we will then have to start making tier two and tier three apiaries. That makes complete sense. So we need to get 400 tier three apiaries, then we can request 100 tier four apiaries. That makes complete sense. And so I guess we'll continue doing this in parts. I don't know how small we can go here, unless we go ahead and just make a bigger crafting CPU, which I think is probably worth investing in just so we don't have to micromanage this quite as much. Okay, so I crafted up one of the tier four apiaries here, and this is the setup that we're gonna copy and paste. So if we go back to copy mode here, we can then shift right click here and right click here, and that's gonna copy this cube. If we wanted to copy the torch at the top here, which I think we do, I think what we could do is put this here, right click again up here, that's gonna move the box up by one. And then I think we can just get rid of that piece of dirt. That's going to allow us to copy the whole thing, including the torch on the top, which is gonna to be essential if we don't want to create essentially a mob farm in our base. But now if we uh, go back to paste mode, in here it should have the option for a materials list. This shows us what we need for every single apiary. We need 51 dirt, that's for the roof and the floor, 79 honey glass, 63 oak logs, basically a snack, uh, one tier four apiary, two torches, and one apiary storage. We need that every single time. And so now all we should have to do is go ahead and teach our system how to make the apiary storage. This one we do want to allow substitutions because we want it to use any blocks available, probably ideally not wood combs, although we do have 2 million of them, so I don't think it really matters uh, too much if it does use the wood combs. We'll go ahead and encode that, and we'll throw it into hopefully one of our spare uh, setups over here. Now, right now, because we've covered all of these, we actually can't access our ME interface. I have also gotten rid of a few torches over here when I put down the new crafting code processing units. And so one thing we can do over here is we should be able to get an interface terminal, that being this guy right here, and that should, in theory, give us access to all of the ME interfaces from one centralized terminal. So let's quickly request an ME interface here. That's going to allow us to make the interface terminal. And if we place that down, let's say right about here, again, ideally using our trademark yellow ME cable, like this and like this, now in here we can see all of our interfaces from one location, including all of these interfaces that are on molecular assemblers. Unfortunately, we are a little light on space here, but thankfully we only need one slot. Look at that. And so let me go ahead and see about requesting like 10 apiary storages for now. Those are gonna come in quite quickly, lovely. Uh, then we can grab, let's say a few stacks of wood, a few stacks being a thousand, that's completely fine. Honey glass, we have quite a bit of already. In fact, we've got four stacks on us already. So we'll leave that for now. Dirt, we'll grab a few stacks of this. Torches, we've got 53, that's fine. And at that point, we're just missing the tier four apiary. So we can get like 25 of these pretty quickly here without using too many bites because we already have all of the tier three apiaries required. And so at this point, am I missing anything else? I am, I'm missing those logs that we requested. Perfect. So if I take all of these out, now we should be able to start pasting these down next to our pre-existing setups. So all we should have to do here is right click in the right place, which I think is here. And because we put it in, the, you, you can build it so that it doesn't overlap, but we of course do want ours to overlap. And so this is kind of perfect. And then it did copy the dirt, which is interesting. But uh, up here, if we were to go ahead and do the exact same thing, I don't know if I can place it this time around kind of inside of the pre-existing setup. I think we can. One thing you can do in here is you can go ahead and open the GUI and you can edit how this works. If I bring the Y level down by one and hit confirm, that should allow us to kind of place this into the pre-existing flooring. Of course, it's ideal if you don't stand in it when you do it, but uh, because it's kind of anchored to the back left corner here, all we have to do is right click on the back left corner and it builds the setup. Perfect. And so, yeah, we just need to keep doing that every single time. Again, ideally not standing in the corner when we do it, and again, making sure that we have enough items in our inventory to make it happen. But if we do, we can just keep copying and pasting this until we have all of them down. And so essentially now the plan is to continue requesting more apiaries until we have enough tier four apiaries to do it. We're gonna keep copying and pasting this setup over and over and over again, getting rid of these little blocks of dirt as we go, I guess. And then we're also gonna start putting in a bunch of dragon 
nectar blocks and dragon bees, of course, which we can breed fairly easily. On top of that, though, there are a few other bees that we do need a lot more of. Those specifically are going to be the awakened draconian bee and the nether star bee, because the awakened draconian bee also only has a 10% drop chance on the awakened draconium, and we need 141,000 awakened draconium blocks, not just awakened draconium ingots. And so the awakened draconium is actually about as hard as the dragon eggs, because whilst we do get 10 times more awakened draconium ingots than we do dragon eggs we need nine times more awakened draconium ingots to make all of the blocks and so it kind of works out to be about the same so we also need to fill a lot of these with awakened draconium bees along with the dragon bees and then the same is true for the nether star bees as well here we need 141,000 nether star blocks that requires a ton of nether stars the nether stars also only have a 10 percent chance we do have nether stars coming in but just nowhere near fast enough we've only got 4,500 blocks out of the 141,000 blocks that we need between today and yesterday, I have made a few changes over here that you may have seen. I've added two more elite centrifuges to the front here. And this is another benefit of adding this little intermediary setup with the glass bottle, because now we can extract and send to any of these centrifuges that we want to set up as dragon honeycomb centrifuges, which we have here. We've tripled those up to accommodate for some of the extra dragon combs that were coming in. I've also added a bit of a buffer here because it was getting a little full and uh, things were clogging up because the dragon combs couldn't go in. And I've also added the ender bee finally over here for some reason we didn't have the ender bee down that is now set up and so ender pearls are coming in up here in fact they were coming in very quickly to the point where we can probably turn the ender bees off pretty soon we're already at sixty thousand. again 141,000 is all that we need the ender bees do have to go in the same centrifuge as the dragon bee combs because the ender comb blocks here do also produce dragon's breath and so uh, right now between streams i did go ahead and change the filter on all of these so all of these are now filtered to send both uh dragon blocks and ender blocks over to these three centrifuges and i think other than that i've made a few small tweaks there were also a few other bees that we had but we didn't have down over here for example uh, for whatever reason our marble bee wasn't down our cinnabar bee wasn't down our zombie bee wasn't down and uh, we've had to surround this dirt block with non-grass blocks to prevent it being turned into grass and so uh, this is working we're still getting dirt which is fantastic we have new bees and yeah essentially now i'm gonna go ahead and try and get us a bunch more apiaries one final thing i did also add uh, a few more drawers over here because things like ender pearls and gunpowder we had a lot of but not enough of and the reason for that is that we previously had them in drawers over here with void upgrades and so we were kind of actively deleting all of our excess gunpowder and ender pearls which is why we were kind of a little behind on those despite having bees working on them for quite some time and so i have added a few more drawers over here for things like slime uh, gunpowder and ender pearls Okay, so not too long later, I've made four more of these 64k crafting storage components. And so now we should be able to request a lot more apiaries at once. Let's have a look here. Can I request 50 of these? I totally can. I think we have a, a crafting CPU that has approximately 400,000 bytes of storage. And so I think we could even go ahead and double that. We could. We could probably even go slightly further, but we'll stick to requesting 100 at a time. And then we can go ahead and convert 100 tier 3 apiaries into 20, 40, or 4 apiaries, and then continue using the copy paste gadget to copy these. One thing that has been suggested by the Twitch chat is the potential use of these danks right here. These are pretty nifty. And if they work with the copy paste gadget, they could make our lives a lot easier in terms of storing, you know, hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, honey glass, wood, dirt, etc., everything we need to build these apiaries. Essentially, these are storage items that let you store items and so right now this tier one dank can hold up to 256 of i believe nine different items for example if we were to go ahead and grab some oak logs again let's request another thousand oak logs here and we would start taking those out we should be able to put those into our dank like this and this one stack should be able to hold up to 256 logs more than you'd normally be able to hold the question is whether or not this copy paste gadget thinks i have those logs and the answer is it looks like it does. So I think the copy paste gadget is able to pull from the dank here. The reason that's useful is not really for this tier one dank, but we can upgrade to a tier two dank very easily, like so. This one can now hold 1,024 items per slot. We can then go up to a tier three dank. This one can hold 4,096 items per slot. We can really go as high as we like here because I think we have basically all of the resources to go for a tier four dank and then for a tier five dank and then the tier six dank requires obsidian that's also completely fine and then finally the highest tier here the, the tier seven dank is also super easy as well and so if we open this up this has a ton of slots that we can use and each and every one of these slots can hold 
the maximum number of items, 2 billion items, which is far too many items. But essentially for us, what it means is that we can take all of these Zerg out and we can put all of these Zerg into one single slot inside of the Dink. We can then do the same thing with Honey Glass. We are going to need more of this, of course, but we can go ahead, take it out, and we can throw it into the Dink. We can do the same with the dirt. We can grab as much dirt as we can get our hands on, and we can throw all of that dirt into the dink like this and we can do the same thing with torches we can put those into a slot and now over in here we should basically always have enough stuff to make these apiaries of course we do have to have the actual apiaries themselves on us but again we have 17 tier 4 apiaries right now we don't really have to put these in here specifically we could keep them in our inventory because they don't take up too much space but we can now go ahead and use all of these items using the copy paste gadget without having to go back to our A2 system every time we want to refill on items, which I think is going to make doing this a lot easier because it also means that if we wanted to, we could copy and paste a much larger area, right? So for example, uh, I don't know if the uh, the beacon is what's causing the issue though. I think it is. It doesn't break the top block, but it does break that block, which is interesting. But um, for example, we could copy and paste like a two by two area. So we could copy and paste more than one AP area at a time, or we could build a full line out and then copy the whole line at once and it'll just make our lives a whole lot easier when it comes to copying and pasting. Okay, so the building continues here. We've got a ton of apiaries. We've got 12 more apiaries down here. We've basically doubled what we had previously, but now if we go and we change back to copy, I think what we should be able to do is right click here, or shift right click here, and then we're gonna right click up at the top here. For that, I am gonna grab one piece of dirt again, just like we did before. I'll place that right about here, and then we'll right click there. And so now that's selected the whole area, all 12 apiaries. And I think if we now go back to paste mode, we can kind of duplicate this again, but obviously I want to do it over on this side. I've gone ahead and moved all of the compacting drawers that were there, and they're now just over on the back of this wall here, uh, because we don't really need them too much. But if our system wants to use them, we might as well leave them there for it to use. And so now over here, what we're gonna do is we could just place it down like this. Uh, that would be horrible because it wouldn't be in line correctly. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the rotate function here. And if we rotate this twice, I think it should be perfectly mirrored. We do need to go ahead and change this back to zero like that. But now if we go ahead and right click this here, it should pull all of the items out of our dink because we had enough for it. And look at that, we've just done it again. We've put down all of the apiaries. The apiaries, do seem to have gone down backwards. It seems like it's rotated everything but the apiary block itself, which is unfortunate. Uh, I think it does, oh, it doesn't work at all, that's fine. So we are gonna have to go and replace the 12 apiary blocks here. But other than the apiary blocks, that was tremendously easier than putting all of these down individually. Also, chat is right here. You can just use a uh, crescent hammer, or potentially another kind of wrench, but the crescent hammer works here for just rotating these very easily, like so. All right, so way too long later, we kind of uh, changed plans halfway through because 100 is crazy, but we have built uh, in total now 60 apiaries, 60 tier four apiaries. We have a six wide, five tall little apartment complex for bees. You'll see the frame rate is tanking now because every single one of these now has bees in it. Essentially, on the left-hand side here, what we've done to reduce the number of nectar blocks required is we've kind of put the nectar blocks in the walls here so the bees can share them. You'll see on both sides here, the bees are uh, sharing the nectar blocks. That means we also don't need any here. And so for every two apiaries, we only need one block. Easy. Then we have to decide which bees to put in. And so on this side here, for these 24, so we have six by four, these 24 apiaries right here all have two awakened draconian bees, two dragon bees, two draconian bees, and two wither bees. The wither bees we've just made, we didn't have them previously. Thankfully, super easy for us to get. It's just a wither skeleton bee and the nether bee, both of which we already have. And then the wither bee next block also super easy to get. And so all of these have two of each of those bees. Over on this side, it's kind of the exact same situation, apart from the fact that there are no draconian bees. So over here, all of these are set up in the exact same way. They all have two wither bees, two dragon bees and two awakened draconian bees. They do all have the draconian bee nectar block. I was originally planning on putting draconian bees in all of these, but we don't need that much draconium. The draconium is a 40% chance from the draconium bee. So if we process this comb, you have a 40% chance to get the draconium ingot. So you're four times more likely to get the draconium ingot over the awakened draconium. So you, in theory, need four times fewer. We've got half as many, you know, two times fewer, which is fine. You know, we've got way more draconium bees than we probably need compared to how many awakened draconium uh, dragon and wither bees that we have, but 
They're all up and running. They're all producing combs. The only trouble now is that we have to take all of the combs from all of these apiaries and get them processed through the centrifuges. And of course, we're probably not going to have enough processing power. There's a few things we can do, of course. We can add more modular routers. We can start pulling things down um, into the centrifuges here. But what I think we probably can start to do now is we can probably start to change the setup a little bit. Right now, we've got all these bees and they're all producing stuff, but there's a lot of bees that I think we can kind of start to uh, to moonlight, to sunset, to, to kind of wind down, get rid of. We have, for example, Invar bees. We only need 141,000 blocks of Invar. We've got way over 200,000. That's not going to be a problem anymore. Uh, what else do we have here? If we look at the blocks ice, we only need 141,000 blocks of it. We've got 1.5 million. That's fine. Bitch of sand, also fine. Uh, Netherrack, I don't know if we need that at all, but it's also fine. If I type in block of... Uh, all this stuff, blocks of coal, blocks of emerald, blocks of slime steel, blocks of fluix, blocks of compressed iron, blocks of regular iron, everything here that's over 141,000, even copper at this point has passed 141,000, diamonds there, blocks of silver is close, and is close, everything from here up, all these bees can be taken offline. We can move them back into jars and essentially stop them from using up some of our elite centrifuge resources, because right now there are all these centrifuges are being used to process combs that for the most part, we don't need. And so what I think I'm going to do between episodes now, because this episode has taken as like nine hours to make, but uh, between episodes, what we'll go ahead and do is um, I'll start taking some of the bees back out. That'll also help with the lag as well, because we're currently at a, uh, a lovely 35 FPS. Uh, we'll take some of the bees back and I'm going to start reassigning some of these elite centrifuges. I'll probably almost certainly end up making more of these elite centrifuges between streams so we can really start to process these combs faster. But, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll also start kind of taking some of these elite centrifuges we already have and kind of connecting them up to the jar system so we can start processing the dragon combs. Things like uh, draconium, awakened draconium, and wither, they don't require the glass bottle, so they can just go into regular centrifuges. But again, it's all about kind of clearing up space with some of the unnecessary bees now to make space for some of those new blocks because we've got a lot of blocks coming in and you'll see that a lot of these are kind of fully full now because they don't have that much space internally like this one up here uh, they're all full but we need to start processing them so we can really get the benefits and uh, i think with the current setup that we have here it's still going to take two or three days for this to fully produce enough awakened draconium enough nether stars and enough dragon eggs for us to make all the singularities but thankfully we still have a lot of other stuff left to do in this pack while this all works of course that also assumes that we have enough uh, centrifuges to process the combs uh, as they come in in real time which you know is yet to be seen but we're going to work on that and yeah from here on, we still have to get all of the singularities actually made. We have to make the quantum compressors, make the singularities. We also have to make the ultimate ingots, which we've not done at all yet. That needs to still be done. And uh, there are also still these singularities here. So these ones are the ones that I've bookmarked because these ones have work that we have to do. I basically looked at the ultimate singularity. I looked at this recipe right here. I bookmarked all of these, and then I checked to see what we needed to do to make them. For the most part, it's just a case of pump all the resources into a quantum compressor and the job is good. But these ones up here require a little bit more work. Uh, the Awakened Draconium, uh, the Dragon Egg, and the Nether Star can now come off this list because now we just need to wait until we have enough. Like the reason they were on the list is because we needed to actively work on getting enough of them to get the resources that we need. The remaining ones here just have little setups that are required. The Burn and the Prismarine are not too difficult. Uh, Prismarine, we are getting Prismarine shards. We just have to craft them automatically into Prismarine blocks and then send them out because unfortunately they don't auto craft in the compacting drawer. You can see right there, there's no block version of it available. And then the Burn one here requires a block of bones. The block of bones requires bone meal and it's not bone meal that we get from the skeleton bee, it's bones. And so again, we have to set up a bit of a crafting system that turns bones into bone meal and then uh, bone meal into bone blocks which should be fine we could also use the wall bee actually which is interesting but the jars are incredibly slow so we probably won't do that uh, netherite singularities we have to craft the blocks of netherite as i mentioned before eventually the plan is going to be to use molten netherite once we get the creative tank for now though uh, we do need to get at least eight of these netherite singularities before we can get the creative tank and so we are going to have to craft twenty four thousand netherite blocks we have started that process over here if we check it out uh, netherite blocks are being made and so we're going to slowly but surely work our way towards twenty four thousand of those those are going to come in faster if we upgrade these machines, which is something we should do in a coming episode to make that just a little bit faster. And then I think we also mentioned the bituminous sand as well. We need uh, 141,000 blocks of bitumen. That's going to require uh, 1.3 million or just shy of, uh, of this actual bitumen. And we have to process all of that through these centrifugal separators to turn the bituminous sand that we do have into the bitumen that we actually need. And so... Probably in the next episode, but maybe the one after, we're going to have to look at setting up a ton of these centrifugal separators so that we can start burning through 
all of the sand we've got and turning it into the thing we actually need, which is the bitumen. And so, yeah, that is a lot of stuff that we still have to do. And so I'm confident that the 60 apiaries that we have here should hopefully be enough for us to be able to, uh, to get all of the resources that we're going to need before we finish the pack. And I'm also not entirely certain if we would still have a, a playable frame rate if we did actually go for the 100 apiaries that I was initially planning on building. Although, in hindsight, I probably could have built these a bit further away, maybe, so that they didn't affect the frame rate and then just chunk loaded the area and uh, teleported them back. But the good news with the setup that we do have is that uh, this one beacon does cover the entirety of all of the bee apartments. And so none of the bees are getting out. They're all covered and they're all going to stay exactly where they are. They're all going to keep producing comms for us. And that's good, flipping egg. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2. There.